Okay, let us pull ourselves back together. We'll review ever so briefly where we are right now in the process. I got sound? I'm looking good there. Okay, excellent. Let's review where we are in the process. We have set up a location, we've set up some design options, we put in some masses for our buildings. As we proceed forward, we're gonna do a little bit of dividing our masses up into mass floors. We should actually should set up the levels first, I should reverse those. And then we're gonna start doing some analysis on this. We're gonna start quantifying this model and do something worthwhile with it. So, let's switch back over to Vasari. First thing I'm gonna do, we already have five floors. That's gonna be fine for most of the masses. Although for that tall, skinny tower, I think I'm gonna need to add some more floors to kind of fully capture the height of that thing. So, if you can, please switch back over to Vasari with me. And the easiest way to do this is probably if you rotate to the front view, you'll see that the little level markers are hanging out. See those little level markers? Okay, if you go to the Model tab and choose the Level tool, we could draw them, but you know what I like to do. I usually offset them. So I say, choose the Pick tool. I put in an offset, and I will go clicking on these. Now, some people like to do this with control dragging. That's kind of another way to do it. I'm not very handy with that, so I tend not to do that, but it sort of looks like this. If I grab onto that and I control drag, I'll sort of spawn one off. Of course, then I have to still kind of try and adjust it. And of course, it's going to 10, 11 feet, not 10 feet, which isn't exactly what I had in mind. So use whichever one works for you. Actually, this is another trick that some people use. Let me control click to get a bunch of them. Okay, this might be a handy way to do it. And with a bunch of them selected, I can control drag. Ooh, that, that's not too bad. I, the question is, is it there? Yes. Hey, check that out. That was slicker than I thought it'd be. <laughs> yes. How do we pick, oh, to pick the one doing level lines, yes. Well, after you've chosen the level tool, we have this choice of do we want to draw them or do we want to pick them? And the pick tool is right here. It's uh, the one that has like a green line with a little arrow by it. So if you choose that, then you can just pick. And I, what I usually do is put an offset in there because I don't want to put it right on top of the line. I want to give it a little bit of an offset. And there we go. So this whole notion of having the floor levels, it's going to be important, not so much from the shadow standpoint. From the shadow and the solar radiation, it doesn't really care about the floor levels. But when it comes time to actually divide that up and start thinking about how the building's used and how much energy it's using, then the issue of floor levels becomes important to us. So if you've got some levels, what you can do is go to your building. And actually, I need to switch into the options so I can change the building. Choose that mass, the mass that I want to divide into floor levels, and say, let's put mass floors in there. And we can choose all the different levels that we want to put them on. Now, let me kind of distinguish between the buildings that we're doing it to and not doing it to. The ones that we divide into mass levels, are that's our way of indicating that those are the ones we care about. Those are the ones that we want to do the energy analysis on. The buildings which are there are just more for context and shadow. I'm not going to divide up into mass floors. If I did, I would also be doing energy calcs on those buildings too. Okay, so only divide up the buildings that you want included in your analysis. Okay, don't include the other ones. So my tall, skinny tower is kind of hanging out. It looks like it has some mass floors. If you're at it, why don't you go ahead and divide up flat and low? We'll, we'll switch over to that option. I'll choose it and say mass floors, and I'll divide it up. Okay. It's okay if you have extra mass floors selected. If the building's not that tall, it just won't use them. Although it's not bad to select them because if you do stretch the parameters to make the building that tall, it'll divide at that point. So it kind of remembers what you said you wanted to divide. Let me go over to pyramid, and I'll do the same thing. Here it is. I'll do mass floors, and I'll choose some mass floors to divide that up by two. Okay, so 
So this is really all just about sort of dividing things so we can start doing energy analysis. Okay, so far so good. You got some mass floors. Everyone's looking like they're working hard trying to get their mass floors in there. That's good. If you're having trouble, raise your hand. We'll try and get to you. Yes? Okay, what you do is you choose the mass. You got that? Now we go to, it's under, oh, where'd it go? Try under the analyze, or is it under model? It's under anal, oh, uh, no, where'd it go? I'm always bad. Okay, um, we got the mass. It's under model? Go back to model. Oh, now it should be there. Oh, yes. Well, we're in modifying mass. That part's good. I'm trying to see why it doesn't show up for you, though. Try under. Go to manage. I think it's under, it should be under model, but I don't see why it's not there. Go to model. You have a mass chosen. Are you in the middle? Go back to modify mass. Are you in the middle of the mass? Try that. Oh, there it is. Thank you. We're just not seeing it there. So choose it. Yep. And then just go ahead and choose off the, click on the different level. Thank you. It's amazing as you work with the different tools, how often you just don't see the tool and it's sitting right there in the ribbon in front of you. Okay, so how are we doing on mass floors? You got some mass floors to work with? Don't worry if you don't have them just yet, because you can sort of oh, kind of keep on going with them a little bit in the background here, because we're going to do a couple things before we get to mass floors where we need it. We're going to start with just looking at the whole issue of shadows and sun and things like that. And to do that, let's just switch to, it doesn't really matter which of the models you go to. You can go to main model or tall and skinny, whatever you want. But let's do this. Let's go ahead and do something called turning on the shadows. And to do that, right down here in the control bar, you'll find shadows off versus shadows on. Go ahead and turn them on. OK, and let's talk about what's going on there. So that will sort of add some shadows to your view. You'll start to see how your building and the other buildings are interacting each other with shadows. Let's see if you get that part turned on. OK, you got some shadows on your view? The shadows should look good. If you orbit around, you can still sort of see the shadows. The shadows will sort of update themselves. OK, now, you might ask, oh, well, what are those shadows indicating? You know, where are we? What's happening with the sun? Like, those are nice shadows, but that's one time of the day at one time of the year. That might not be very informative to you. So in addition to sort of turning on the shadows, we can turn on something called the sun path. And let me turn on the sun path. And you'll see something that looks like this. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can sort of see it. This is the, is it the solar heliodon? Okay. And what this is letting us to do is control the position of the sun. This, this should make you feel very powerful. You can control the position of the sun in the sky. <laughs> so how do you do that? You can come on over here and choose the date. Now, it says 2010. Don't be freaked by that, because the truth is the sun didn't change much. Well, hopefully it's not changing too much from year to year. It comes back to the same place year after year. And you can take a look at the sun path. Oh, try this. Say like it's uh, happening in December. Watch what happens. I'm not sure if you noticed. The sun path went very low in the sky. Whereas if I choose to June, it's very high in the sky. And this is going to be very useful to us, because watch this. OK, here we are. We're sort of sitting there at noon and June. Notice what's happening about where the sun is. The sun is kind of up here in the sky, and we're casting these sort of very short shadows. If I come back over to December, notice the same noontime. Look at how long those shadows are. Okay, they're really going, because the sun's so much lower in the sky. This is really the essence to a lot of how we start to approach passive solar design, in that we can go through and set up overhangs and shading features in such a way that we let the sun come in at the low angle during the wintertime so we can get the benefits of heating our building with the sun. Okay, but during the summertime, when we're trying to keep the sun out because it's adding to our air conditioning bill, okay, we have shading features which block the sun from coming in. And that fact that it's so different through the year and that we want a different thing to happen in the different times of the year, we can work together by adding you know, shading features. So that's really the essence of like, you know, why we can sort of start playing around with passive design. If you try moving the sun, just drag it to an earlier time of the day or a later time of the day, 
Okay, you can start to see really how things start to interact. And you start seeing the effect of our shadows on other things. For example, I'm casting a little bit of a shadow late in the afternoon on my big round tall tower back there. If I go earlier in the day, some of those other buildings are probably casting shadows on me. You can even see here that even though it's relatively early in the day, these buildings, which really aren't too tall, are still casting shadows which are blocking the sun from hitting my lower floors. Can this impact of sort of your shadows on me and my shadows on you really contributes to this whole notion of really how much solar energy is hitting the building, which is going to affect ultimately how our energy performance works. Because the shading from other buildings, you know, it's going to block heating when we want it, but it's also going to keep us cool at times. And we can really need to sort of adjust our surfaces to take advantage of really which is exactly what's going on with it. Okay, So we can go through and play around kind of with this shading information and start to understand a little bit about what's going on. What you're looking at right there is just the total path in the sky between the lowest point in the winter versus the highest point up in here during June. Okay? And I should let you know this is very, very location specific. This is for Palo Alto. If we went through and switched to oh, Saudi Arabia, or we switched to Australia, or we switched to anywhere else in the world, you're going to start having a very different series of sort of sun affordances based on the latitudes. Okay, so it's very important that in order to get this stuff accurate, you have to choose the right location. So it doesn't work when we're doing green design to take a building that I designed for Palo Alto and put it in Saudi Arabia because they have an entirely different sun pattern and what they're worrying about in terms of the heat coming in and out of the building and what we're worrying about are very different. This funny thing happens like here in the US, we spend a lot of time worrying about heat radiating out of the building okay, during the winter months. But in the summertime, we're always worried about, oh, just air conditioning loads and heat coming into the building. You go to parts of the world, if you start looking at the profiles of for like cities in India, it's almost always hot there. So they always worry about heat coming into the building as opposed to heat radiating out. It sort of depends on your local climate conditions. So sustainability and the issues we address are very local. Okay. So that's sun and how you can start to look at that. But let's try and get a little more numeric about this. We can, if we go zooming on up, say, hey, I would like to understand just really how much solar radiation is hitting this building or how much shadow we're casting on other buildings. And I can sort of do that by sort of sliding the sun around and starting to understand what the impact is there. But there ought to be a numeric way to look at that that says, you know, across the entire year, or across the month, <coughs> or a day even, really, how much solar radiation is there? Because it's sort of a moving target. And how you can do that is as follows. Let me zoom on in a little bit closer so you can see. I'll go to my uh, tall tower. I will choose. Come on over here to analyze, to do something called solar analysis, where we use the Ecotech solar radiation tool to do something a little more uh, numeric. OK, let's see if I can select that face. Is it going to let me? It is. OK. Even though it's, oh, it's in the main model too. What I want to do is, let me close out of there again. I'll do it again slowly. This is an example of really an Ecotech tool, something that's a very sort of powerful, detailed tool being imported into Vasari so we can use it and get quick feedback. In this tool, we can go through and select. This is a tool that we use to go through and select specific surfaces. And we can choose the surfaces that we want to look at. And I'm going to choose those two surfaces. Now, you don't necessarily want to choose every surface because the results are going to, you know, the more surfaces, the longer it's going to take to compute the results. And you sort of want to think about the surfaces of interest. For example, I'm not going to choose the rooftop because the rooftop gets so much sun. If I scale my results based on sort of what's happening at the roof level, it'll all, you know, the, the values of interest will be at the lower end of the scale and the roof will just sort of be dominating my analysis. So I'm going to sort of just choose the ones that are you know, within the range of what's interesting to me and focus on them. When I click this to close out, it'll start to do an analysis. And let's talk about what's going on there. So over here, let's see if I can zoom that out a little. Even zoom that back in. You'll see 
that in terms of the total BTUs per square foot across the year, because by default I'm doing a whole year analysis, this face of the building is getting somewhere around 75.4, so the southern face is getting a lot of BTUs of energy. This east face is getting less energy, and way down here in the corner, we're getting sort of you know, negligible energy. There's very little happening down there, and the reason that's happening is it's not just because it's so low on the building, it's because we're being shaded by the other buildings. Okay, so that's what's going on. So as I look at this and I start thinking about the face of this building, you know, there's that much energy radiating from the sun on that face. That's energy that I could be using to warming the building. That's energy that I'm going to have to worry about shading out of the building during the summertime. Okay? That's also energy that I could be using if I was trying to put in solar panels and trying to figure out what are the uh, uh, optimal places for solar panels versus not so optimal places. So the solar radiation analysis is all about that. It's just really trying to figure out where are we getting good insulation? Where is good sun coming? Let's try going for a different one of the buildings. Let me go to my pyramid building and see how it stacks up. Got to just shift it on over to the other design option. I'll say do my solar radiation analysis. Cumulative, that's the whole idea that it's summing the values as opposed to you could look at the average value or the peak value, different ways of doing it. Sort of depends on what you're after. And if I choose that, actually even up here I should tell you, this is where we can start to choose like, oh, what is it? You know, the range of things that are included. But I'll choose the settings. Let me choose that surface, this surface. I'll even choose that surface back there. Yeah, I'll get that one too. And I'll say close that out. So let's take a look at what's going on. So on this pyramid, the southern face is getting an awful lot of sun. Even the tip top of the pyramid on the east side is getting some sun. These lower portions, nothing. Even over here on the west side, although it's on the west side, there's not a whole lot of sun radiating on those surfaces. Okay, not a lot of energy radiating on those surfaces. So this is just the start of getting some interesting values. Now, if you are numerically minded as opposed to graphically minded, you can go through and do this. You can export values. And if you choose to export, oh, what's going to do? It's going to go out and let me save a CSV file. So what's a CSV file? Comma separated values. Okay, and it'll actually, for oh, a bazillion XYZ coordinates on the surface of that building, actually tell you the precise insulation value there. Okay, so you could feed that data into another analysis model and really understand. Yeah, not just these sort of gross numeric values, but sort of what really is happening precisely numerically. Okay? And if you were doing a very detailed analysis, for example, if you're working as part of the solar decathlon team, you might want to analyze your building and really get you know, very precise readings on what's happening on each of the different surfaces. Okay, so that's available to you. Even here, we could take the same model, take it into Ecotech, the actual native tool that's bringing it into this tool, and get into a lot more detail. But this is sort of a good first order approximation that might sort of start getting us thinking differently about our building. Okay, let me go ahead and close up over there. And we are going to shift our gears 